at any time now or in the future when the PBP resumes office in this country. We find, because we're going to review every single case, that any public officer has acted contrary to the law or sub, has acted upon or against individuals based on political directions, then those officers will face the consequences. If they act professionally, they have absolutely nothing to fear from the People's Progressive Party. But should they be discriminating against people or, or, or doing things that are illegal, then they will face the consequences. We have heard of so many cases where people, until now, we are not clear about Soku's role. We heard Minister Harman said in Parliament that Soku now falls under the jurisdiction of the office of the president. We, we, were, we established Soku under the jurisdiction of the police force, the authority of the commissioner. But so we, we have seen we were promised these protocols about how Soku would operate for ages now. We can't see what those protocols are. We have heard from many individuals whose homes have been raided in late into the night. People in front of their wives and their children being subjected to all sorts of humiliation, photographs taken of their homes and their bedrooms, people searching at 2 a.m. in the morning in their home. This is not consistent with, with police action unless it is guided by a judicial process or there is a strong case of terrorist financing or some sort of matter of that nature, serious matter of that nature, where the police would have to, in those circumstances, act in a different manner. And there are numerous people whose homes have been raided, businessmen. L lots of those people now are questioning whether they should continue to invest in this country. Now, we had always said that the police should have the authority to go after people for money laundering or terrorist financing or any illegal act. But the police can't do this raid a home or so cool on mere suspicion that they should, if they should go to the court, secure a warrant, apply for a warrant from a judge, secure that warrant from the judge, and then on the basis of this warrant, enter people's homes and conduct the searches. And they can do so at hours that are probably with, with, with decorum. They can also do, do this with decorum. So we don't want that power taken away from the police, the power to investigate and to apprehend and to conduct searches. But this surreptitious late night reading of people's homes, and you don't, I don't know if the media is fully aware of how many homes have been raided because some of these people are fearful to even talk about it and stuff taken away from them. And I'm not even sure that this stuff is lodged with the police when it's taken away. Could just be another ripoff of the businessmen. And so, if there has to be clarity about this and many other things, many other things. And so, let us talk, I seen, I think Demerara Waves, by, um, Dennis, you said that when you are dealing with the infamous BK matter, you said it's rumored that by Shen Lin gave the People's Progressive Party a hundred million dollars. It's one of your stories. 
And I checked with the general secretary, and I checked with our finance secretary, and we did not receive $100 million from Bai Shen Lin. We did not. So that's one. Secondly, we heard that Bai Shen Lin had millions of hectares of land. At one time, it was rumored to. And then we were pleased that the audit report itself pointed out that they acquired about 400,000 hectares, but, but they had acquired it mainly through buying up other, other smaller um, properties. Whether they got the permission to do that or not, that's a different matter. But it's not true that Bai Shenlin got millions of hectares under the PPP. In fact, the only company that got millions of hectares is, is Barama. And that took place before the People's Progressive Party got into power. And having said that, on the Bai Shenlin manner, manner we I'm pleased to see also that they said, after saying that we don't care anything about Linden, that Bai Shenlin got a billion dollars or over billion, billions of dollars in concessions on machinery and equipment under the PPP, to, that is their factory, to establish it in Linden, in Region 10, to create jobs there. We pushed for that to happen. The fact that Bai Shenlin did not Comply is another issue, and the law will take its course there because it did not, in the time frame, the allotted time frame, make the investment. So it proves, it, it disproves another lie, another lie that we did not, um, that we did not care about investments and jobs in Linden. In fact, we are pushing Bai Shenlin to go there. And then, coming back to the issue that Gail Teixeira wrote the Norwegians on, we're still calling now, and we're going to re resurrect this issue, we're going to call again on the Norwegians, the World Bank, the Inter-American Development Bank, and everyone else to suspend all the GRIF payments because $15 billion of GRIF money is budgeted in this year's budget. That money that they did not support, APNU did not support, that was earned, they are, in fact they are critical of, and they are spending now. But we want it suspended until Raphael Trotman apologizes for the statement that he made in Parliament that the People's Progressive Party gave out all the forests. Either that or an international investigation should, should be um, initiated to see whether that is true. And the investigation would show that about a third of our forests are out. And in fact, the, the, for those who got TSAs, the TSAs, the majority of them, more than half of the TSAs, nearly 3 million of the 5 million odd hectares were given out prior to 1992 in the last few years of the government, and the 23 years that the PPP has been in office, it gave out less, about two point something million hectares, but less than half of what was given out. And it's either Raphael Trotman apologizes for the misleading statement he made, or we're going to resurrect our call for the, the um, the suspension of the GRIF funds. But regardless of what they say about the PPP and the forests and the management of our natural resources, we signed an agreement with Norway to preserve 99.9% .9 of the forests. We didn't give it away to Asian companies and everyone else. In fact, they're benefiting, this government is benefiting from that agreement. They're using the money now. Secondly, when you look at the the independent assessors who came to Guyana to look at our deforestation rate, they said it's one of the lowest in the world. And most of it came from mining, not from the wanton 
cutting down of our trees. And so those things tell you we had international independent verifiers who came in and checked our stewardship. So you can say all you want about Baishan Lane and all the other logging companies, but look at the results. 99.9% .9 of our forests to be preserved, lowest deforestation rate, one of the lowest in the world, assessed by an international group. Um, these are things, and we earn an, and an international standing on low carbon development. So those are some of the matters that I wanted to speak about. I, maybe we leave the others a little bit later. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. We will, we will now open the floor as usual, the usual protocol, gentlemen and ladies. I, will, I saw you first. No, it's who I see. Now you go the first. Uh, I have Mr. Mosley, Mr. Mosley, then Mr. Chabra. Uh, Mr. Jack, yes, sir. Uh, with regards to uh, Baishan Lin and um, your party, you said that they did not make a $100 million donation. Yeah. Uh, they didn't make any donation at all. The, not that I, I spoke with both persons, no. None no, no, none. Yes, sir, uh, with regards to uh, But can we be a little bit... Um, thing on these rumors, because so much could be rumored. It could be rumored that we, like paid a reporter 15 million from the Baishan Lin money to, to keep quiet, <laughs> to keep quiet and stuff. Can we go a little bit light on the rumors? Because it seems as though most of these rumors seem to be to the detriment of the PPP, not to some of the other parties. Anyhow, okay, oh, sorry about that. I just had to get that in. Okay. Sorry, but please, go on. Three years ago, when your party was still in government, there was this issue with the vehicles. They were seized, and then they were released, and taxes were not paid on them. Okay. Would you uh, agree, or do you think that the government that's been there <coughs> ought to go through all the actions? The I, I, believe, I believe it is the right of every government to including new governments, to check everything. And if they find cases where people have made um, promises or have agreements with the government that they did not fulfill, then they have a right to enforce those agreements. Not, not capriciously, so, but, but following the course of the law. And what do I mean by this? Take, for example, by Shenling, having not paid taxes based on the agreement they are supposed to for these luxury vehicles, from what I gather, they did not pay the taxes. If, if that's the agreement, they should pay the taxes. They land on the East Bank. We went through this public tender the last time I explained public tender expression of interest. Every single developer who expressed interest got a plot at a fixed price, um, excepting two persons who had tendered. Eddie, Eddie Boyer, I explained this to him because he had just won the tender, the open tender for the Lilienda land, and Tulsi Pasad, who said they don't want to pay. They, they wanted it for free, the land. They didn't want to pay as developers because they had to put in lots of money into it. So they did not get allocations. Two, two groups. They, but there is a, an agreement about how those developers should act. They're supposed to put in investments, they're supposed to do a number of things, etc. I'm not sure they can sell the land. So this government is within its right to see what they agreed to and enforce it. Enforce it. Now, on the other hand, the core homes. Why are you going to want to take away these things from poor people? Or, or ordinary people. Even a person got a house lot. They can't afford to build, but they legitimately got a house lot in this time. 
why governments have to also understand, exercise some sort of conscience and, and discretion. You can't go after the big ones yet to take away, enforce the law in relation, but you're going after sitting ducks, ordinary people who have a core home, who can't